welcome to this day with Quimper Unitarian Universalist Fellowship. Whoever you are, wherever you're from, whomever you love, and whatever your faith or tradition, you are welcome here. My name is Ruby, and today is our coming of age service. Last week, we honored those in our congregation bridging into adulthood, and this week, we are celebrating a different rite of passage. As a community, we all have to come together to honor us as we pass into a new stage of youth. The 12 of us, grades seven through nine, worked with mentors who walked alongside us throughout the year. We engaged in community service, explored our beliefs, and learned from one another. Our final project was to write a personal statement of our beliefs that we called our credo, and we will share those with you today. I'd like to first begin the service by acknowledging that the water, land, and shoreline here in Port Townsend are the traditional territory of the Sklalem and Chimicum peoples. We honor and acknowledge our indigenous members and neighbors as we vow to help restore and sustain these homelands. As we call in our time together, let us settle our minds, calm our hearts with the ringing of our chime. Our call to community this morning is hymn number 402 from You I Receive. Please rise in body or in spirit. Do you want to get on the other side? <laughs> Kristen, Otto, and Ikuria. Please join me now in our chalice line words. They were written by Jamie Dore. As we light this chalice, we take those little sparks glowing within all of us and combine them to create this flame. Our opening words are by Marjorie C. Squire. Children all, we come together in faith and hope to find what meeting life holds for us, to laugh and sing with one another, to soothe the wounds of daily life, and to grow together in wisdom and love. Please join me in our responsive reading, the last line we will read together. As infants, named as unique beings, we are welcome in this community. As youth, wrestling with questions of who we are and want to be, we are welcome in this community. As imperfect beings, making mistakes and disappointing ourselves, yet also rising to unexpected heights, we are welcome in this community. Through all ages and stages, all the ups and downs of the lifetime, we are welcome in this community.
What we'd like to do now is acknowledge and welcome those who are visiting us this morning. If you are online with us, you are welcome to say hello in the comment section and tell us your name and where you're from. If you are intending in person, rise as able or raise your hand so we may welcome you. Welcome. Welcome everyone. We are glad you are here with us today. This service is an intergenerational service for everyone from second grade and above. This means that we are just about to sing our littlest to their classes and childcare. And the other children will stay here and listen to me and our other youth. There is childcare available, and if anyone wants to leave the sanctuary at any time, we take no offense. Please rise in body or spirit to sing our youngest to their classes. I now welcome up Raina from Count Bosite for our offering. All right. <laughs> thank you, Luke. Um, thank you, everyone. Uh, my name is Raina Baker, and I'm the executive director for Camp Bosite Northwest, which is located just down the road in Chimicum, um, off of West Valley. Um, we are one of only four programs in the state of Washington that provides overnight respite camp care for people with special needs, and we provide that for all ages. So you can start come to camp at seven, and you can be at camp at 70, um, which is pretty spectacular considering that most of our programs um, for people with special needs end at the age of 21. Um, it's a emotional thing that we all embrace in the special needs community. I'm very emotional about our program and the, pro uh, the things that we do, the, pieces of the community that we bring together. We serve people of Jefferson County, we serve people of the Olympic Peninsula, we serve people of Washington State and beyond. Um, our campers come to camp for social, educational, and emotional support and programs, and simultaneously, we give the gift of respite to their family members, to their moms, to their dads, to their grandmas, to their caregivers. Every camper that we support in turn supports a minimum of three additional caregivers. There is only, as I mentioned, the four of us in the state that provide these kinds of programs and the opportunity to be able to give to this incredible community that when you meet some of our campers, and I'll tell you a little bit about them, where you have a 57-year-old who has been under the care of her parents for 57 years and that we don't normalize the respite that is needed. Um, we normalize that in a lot of good spaces for our moms, especially on our mama day um, today. Um, but it's so important that we are supporting this community, not only for our campers, but also for our families and their caregivers. Um, our camp was started because back in 1989 because there weren't a lot of opportunities uh, for people who are neurodivergent. Um, we serve all spectrum of disabilities, challenges, and what we like to call superpowers. Um, it's a really, really amazing program, and we do this year-round. We have weekend camps, we have summer camps, um, we do all different kinds of activities to bring our community together to help and to support these amazing campers. I want um, I'm here today out of the gift of um, a nomination from one of your um, fellow members here, and I want to share that one of the things that we are trying to do is to raise a minimum of $50,000 every year for camper scholarships, or what we call camperships. And 
there's so many reasons why we need the funding to be able to do what we do. One of those reasons is Ricky. Um, he has an intellectual delay, he's 42 years old. He actually lives alone and he has no family and he lives on $750 a month. And he doesn't get a break, he doesn't get the social activities and the social norms and the vacations and the things that we all maybe are even lucky enough to take for granted. Um, but he gets to come to camp one week and he comes in and you see the weight of loneliness that exists on his shoulders. And he brings such joy and he's nonverbal and then the joy starts to come and the sounds start to come and you can see why we do what we do. Chris, who has cerebral palsy, who is 28 and lives with his grandmother um, and needs full and complete support with his activities of daily living. So showering, eating, um, the toilet. Um, and he gets to come and grandma gets a break. And finally, Max, who's nine, and Max has fetal alcohol syndrome and is on the spectrum. Um, and a couple of weeks ago, Max was having a particularly tough day, and he said, why is my brain so messed up? Will it ever change? And you, how do you explain that to him? How do you tell him, it's gonna be okay, we're gonna work through this together. You've got all the resources and we're here as one of those things and one of those support systems for you but they need the funding to be able to come and do what we do, as well as in so many other places. There's loads of ways that you can get involved. Um, donating in dollars is amazing and something that we love, but you can also come and volunteer. You can be um, camp counselors. You can come in and work on the weekends. You can be a nurse. You can be in the kitchen. Um, we need all different kinds of support. Uh, additionally, you can share our story out with your inner circle. And that's something that's incredibly important as we get to know our community even better. We have friends and neighbors just down the road that don't know what we do. And we're working on sharing that with our community, which is the best blessing of why I'm here today. And lastly, is that we have a rental and a retreat center that funds our programs. So if you ever have a wedding or a reunion or a need for a retreat for your youth, we can do that. Um, and that goes into all of our programs and funding. Sharing our story out with our community um, is so important and being able to be here today and share my emotion and my passion. Um, I'm the crier, my staff laugh at me often because I just love to tell my story and it's so, and our camper's story and it's so important to me. Um, but I just wanna thank you for your time and your space um, and celebrate this beautiful, beautiful day and Mama Day too. Um, and if you will consider helping us get towards that $50,000 goal to support our campers this year, that would be even more exciting. So thank you very much. We will now receive offerings, which today goes to Camp Both site. If you would like to donate to this worthy cause, you have a few options. The ushers will now come among you and receive the offerings from those of you in person. For those of you who would prefer to text the amount you'd like to give to the numbers now showing, go to our website, QUUF.org, and click the giving link, or simply just click QUUF and just remember to put Campo site in the memo line. Now we will res gratefully receive your offerings as we listen to David Lawrence Wake Up, performed by Ruby Grossman and Kestrel Campbell. Here's the one thing I want you to know You got some place to go Life's a test, yes, but you go toe to toe. You don't give up, no, you grow. And use the pain, cause it makes you you. And I wish I could hold you through it. I know it's not the same, you got living to do. And I just want you to do it, so 
get up, get out, relight that spark. You know the rest by heart. Wake up, wake up, if it's all you do. Look out, look inside of you. It's not what you lost, it's what you can raise in your voice in the rain. Wake up, your dream, and make it true. Look out, look inside of you. It's not what you lost. Relight that spark, time to come out of the dark. Wake up. Wake up. Better wake those demons. Just look them in the eye. No reason not to try. Life can be a mess. I won't let it cloud my mind. I let my fingers fly. And I use the pain, cause it's part of me. And I'm ready to power through it. Gonna find the strength, find the melody. Cause you show me how to do it. So get up, get out, relight that spark. You know the rest by heart. Wake up, wake up, if it's all you do. Look out, look inside of you. It's not what you lost. It's what you can't raise in your voice in the rain. Wake up your dream and make it true. Look out, look inside of you. It's not what you lost. Relight that spark, time to come out of the dark. Spirit, spirit, I wanna hear it, hear it. No need to fear it, you're not alone. You're gonna find your way home. Wake up, wake up, if it's all you do. Look out, look inside of you. It's not what you lost, it's what you gave. That was beautiful. Thank you so much all for being here this morning. Um, we now have a couple of announcements. Uh, first, our healthy community team has an announcement this morning, and it looks like Joanna is the one coming up. Anna Sanders, a member of the Healthy Community Team here at QUF. After the service today, we will continue to host another uh, conversation circle, so right up here in front. Um, it'll be on a topic of, you know, what stood out for you today about the service, so it's a chance to share. Um, and then after, um, after this and another couple of weeks, we'll be wrapping up the conversation circles to be moving on to other um, conversations and ways to build healthy communities here at QUF. And um, to let you know that we're going to be gathering, and I know families have a lot going on today, so we don't, you're not required to be here, but to let you know that we're starting to gather, we'll ring a chime uh, in the coffee hour just to let you know that we're, we're getting ready to congregate. So please join us if you're interested and enjoy your beautiful day. Thank you, Joanna. Uh, and then I invite Deb Carroll up for a special announcement. Good morning. 
I love all of you here together. <laughs> I'm here to talk about the lifeblood of this church, our beloved community, and your giving that makes it possible. I hope you read last week's message from the board, the finance committee, and the pledge team, letting you know that we do not yet have enough pledges to fund the church budget for next year. This second ask that's in your email urges you to pledge, increase your pledge, or give a one-time gift so that we can support our new developmental minister and the staff and work with them to help this community heal and thrive. I've been a member of QUF for 24 years. During that time, my three children participated in the full array of religious education programs offered, including days like today. Um, they also did OWL and Bridging, Mystery Pals. Some of you participated in that. You were OWL facilitators, Mystery Pals, RE teachers, coming-of-age mentors, and youth group advisors. Thank you for showing up with your gifts of service and love. This whole congregation also showed up by fully funding the church budget so that QUF had the minister and the staff it needed to provide the programming and services for our families. This faith community showed up for me and my family when I was diagnosed with breast cancer. During my treatment and recovery, we were loved and supported in countless ways by the pastoral care team, the religious education committee, the staff, the minister, and many of you individually. And it was our minister and director of family ministry who dropped everything one day to sit with me and my family at the hospital while my son was in the ICU showing up so that we did not have to be alone in our grief and our pain. My son's memorial service took place right here with many of you in attendance. My family was again held in the arms of this beloved community. Here in this place where we show up for each other. The bottom line is, I need you and you need me, and we show up for each other, and we need this place, QUUF, with all its warts and troubles, with all its joy and inspiration, a place to be a beloved community together through all kinds of sorrow and joy. We are in this together, and being in it together means paying for it together, because it won't be here if we don't. So I'm asking you to show up with me and support QUF financially so that we can continue to create beloved community in this place where we hold and care for each other, where programs that support families and youth can thrive, and where we can remember and be remembered at memorial services. This is paying it forward. This is gratitude. Thank you. Thank you, Deb. Uh, and now we are going to share our joys and sorrows here in this community recognizing that our personal joys and sorrows are only a fragment of the joys and sorrows of the larger community of life. And thus we place this first stone in recognition today of Mother's Day, in honor of all the women who have birthed, mothered, or mentored us, and in recognition of the complication of many of these ties. May we honor each of our individual experiences and stories and place this first stone. And now within the congregation, we light a candle for Susan Landau and her family, 
Susan's 104-year-old mother made her transition on Saturday, May 13th, early in the morning. As Susan's mother was suffering from Alzheimer's disease, the family is grateful that she has been released into the next world. And now we place a final stone, holding in our hearts the joys and sorrows I've just shared, but also thinking of such joys and sorrows among us that are unexpressed but of no less importance. I invite you now into a moment of silence. Thank you. Also, I see a new family in the back, and we actually totally have space for you in the front row if you'd like to come. Yeah, we have space for four. If you all could just scoot over a little bit, we got space. It's no fun if you're the only one sitting outside. That's like now welcoming. <laughs> Perfect. And you can just pop that binder onto the floor. Yeah, Cynthia, will you grab it? Perfect. Hello, welcome. This is a special month here in the congregation. It's rare that I come before you twice to do two huge rites of passage services right back one after the other, and I probably won't do it again. Um, but <laughs> super glad to be doing it. <laughs> So last week, we welcomed three of our youth into adulthood, and this week we are honored to welcome 12 of our, I hate to call you children because you're so, I don't know, I find that to be kind of humans, 12 humans, that's good, 12 humans into youthhood here at QUF. Cultures have traditionally relied on their elders to encourage, mentor, and initiate their youths, and Unitarians are no exception. We have developed this coming-of-age program as a faith to acknowledge the passage from childhood to youthhood and adolescence and support them as they enter into the larger sense of community. Our coming-of-age program has been held here every three years since we moved into the building in 1997. And we conduct it, we, it used to be every three years, and now we conduct it every other year. And after today, we have now had 123 youth come of age at QUF. I know, what? You're coming into a lineage. Uh, <laughs> And this year, I specifically sought out each mentor for each of our youth, seeing their particular talents and specialties and personalities. And I have been so amazed and impressed by the incredible connections that our mentors and youth have curated over this past year. I was reminded this week um, that we began this process by tie-dyeing in the pitch black, which was not <laughs> intentional, um, but really showcased how creative and resilient and game this entire group is for adventures with one another. We've had interesting monthly meetings where we considered and compared our beliefs on higher powers and death and our values, and each pair has further participated in worship services, engaged in community and service at QUF led rituals, gone camping, and built altars. And you can see lining the sanctuary, we have all of the altars that they built, and I highly encourage you to look at them after the service. We also have the words to the songs, as well as the credo statements posted up along the walls, as well as on each of the columns, because there weren't enough doors. Um, but I highly encourage you to look if you want to review any credo statements you heard or to look at all of their altars. 
The credos that they have prepared, their I believe statements, share where they are currently at in their perspective on the universe. And I say statements loosely because some will speak, some will play music, some have created works of art, and some will sing. Each expression of their beliefs is truly unique to them as a person. This is a marvelously creative, compassionate, and introspective bunch, and I'm really excited for you to hear from them today. Our mentors will be introducing their mentees to you, and I want you particularly to hear the profound love that has grown between each of them. To me, the true power and importance of an intergenerational community is that our children and youth feel truly seen and heard and cared for by adults, and that adults get to know them on an individual basis. This is witnessing the true interweaving of our web, and I can't wait for you to see their connections. So I now welcome our first pair up, Joseph and AJ. They're ready for you. I've wiped about 9,000 tears already this morning, 9,000 more to go. Uh, my friend A.J. Ross is a vibrant combination of athlete and intellect. Uh, he's someone who can dribble a basketball and dribble a soccer ball. He can hit three-point shots from the perimeter, and he can gracefully fall into a discussion comparing the human eye and a camera lens. Now, while doing an interview assignment for the Coming of Age program with AJ, I discovered him to be a deeply thoughtful, deeply caring, and someone who is brimming with capital L life, big I ideas, and big C curiosity. Our congregation is incredibly fortunate to have AJ as a part of it, and I encourage everyone here this morning to listen very closely to what this considerate and impressive young person has to share with us. I give to you A.J. Ross. I believe that a higher power or a being of all could exist, but I don't know enough to make a definitive decision. I've heard others say nature, love, or interconnectedness. I think that they represent a big part in the power that we can't see, but I don't think that one of them is the final answer. I take a more scientific approach to the beginning of life and the universe as we know it. I think that the Big Bang created all of the matter and energy in the universe 14 billion years ago, and I think that humans were created much later through evolution. I believe that empathy and kindness are essential in discerning right from wrong. I try to treat others with fairness, respect, no matter their background or beliefs. I believe in making good ethical choices that positively contribute to the world and give you a sense of accomplishment. I've found that my friends and family are important to me in my life. I also value my health and the connections that I have with others. As for what happens after death, I believe that nobody would know until it happens to them. Because of this, I don't have a definitive position. I think that reincarnation or an afterlife could be possible, but we would have no way of knowing for sure. The purpose of life is another question that has many opposing views. As for my individual purpose, I strive to discover and follow my passions, interests, and values. I aim to make a meaningful contribution to the world and to learn and grow as a person. My name is Dana, and I am fortunate enough to have known my mentee since she was a toddler. After meeting Isla and her family in 2012, I became her nanny for several years. Isla's spirit was a bright spark, and I loved spending time reading books, playing with baby dolls, and having spontaneous dance parties with her. I was thrilled to reconnect with Isla through this program. The bright spirit I encountered when Isla was in her early childhood 
continues to shine and thrive today. She amazes me with her perceptiveness, creativity, and compassion. Isla builds deep relationships with family and friends and her community. She loves learning and exploring and is particularly passionate about dance as a form of creative expression. Isla also possesses clarity and wisdom beyond her years, which is evident when we talk about spiritual experience. I'm so grateful for my relationship with her. May I now introduce Isla Mara Patrick. Um, I made this painting for my credo statement, and this is what I believe. Um, I believe there is a presence or a spirit in the natural world. I feel a connection with it, with it when I go outside. I don't feel like there is one superior being, but that there is a feeling of intelligence from the past and the future in nature. I believe that everyone can have their own beliefs and why we are, and about why we are here and how the life and the afterlife work, and that we must respect each other's beliefs. I want to become the type of person who is compassionate and has empathy for everyone, even if they don't share the same beliefs as me. I've had role models in my life who have showed me how important compassion and empathy really are. I'm Steve Blair, and I've been very fortunate to uh, have Luke as my uh, ment mentee. Um, and I highly recommend the experience. Uh, I'm going to start with a quote by Nadia Comaneci. She was a very famous uh, Romanian gymnast. Do not run away from a challenge because of fear. Instead, run towards it because the only way to escape the fear is to trample it under your feet. I love that quote, and uh, it shows how sports can be a metaphor for life. Luke and I were well, well paired. We both enjoy sports. Our first meeting was nine holes in Port Townsend. <laughs> if Luke isn't too busy with his other sports, and I, actually we talked about that this morning, and he's had asked me to text him for uh, future rounds. Uh, Luke plays football, basketball, wrestling, and baseball probably ping-pong, too. His favorite, by far, is basketball. Here's what sports teaches Luke. Play by the rules. Listen to your coach. Trust yourself. Stay in the moment. Don't anticipate outcomes. Keep an open mind and a positive attitude. Be a good teammate and a good sport. There are many lessons not mentioned, uh, obviously. Every time Luke participates in a sporting event, he's learning these lessons. I think he has positioned himself well for a happy and uh, fulfilled future. Here's Luke. I feel most engaged when I'm with family and friends and I'm playing sports. I would like to live somewhere where I'm surrounded by people and I feel connected. I want to be a per person who people can trust and relate to. I believe in being a good person. I'm good at sports and the things I learn in sports teach me how to deal with my life experiences. I try to have a positive attitude about life so it makes my life experiences more likely to be positive. My mom, dad, and grandpa have installed these values in me. I've been coming to UU since the day I was born. My favorite parts have been celebrating holidays and thinking about what they mean. I can't say if I'm Christian, Hindu, or anything else, but I will say the trip to the Hindu temple surprised me. One thing that was interesting was they don't have any services. You just have to be a good person and anyone can call themselves Hindu. The guy giving us the tour also said, Education and being good to your family is what matters. I think that makes sense. 
Another place where I've thought about my beliefs is at a basketball camp I go to in the summer. One thing the one of the camp's missions is that is it's more about bas, bas it's more about life than basketball. They say train your mind, heart. We believe sports to bring out the best in people, not the worst. Character is just as important to develop as shooting mechanics. Courage, value courage, hard work, self-discipline, self-respect, enthusiasm, mental toughness, solid faith, and the importance of family. The camp is based off Christian values. We believe it is crucial to develop physical, mental, and relational spirituality. Train your mind, heart, you can strengthen Train, training your mind and heart can strengthen you to go through any difficulties and call, and call you to a better way of living. It seems like a lot of things have in com a lot of rel religions have things in common with each other in basketball. We have quite the spotlight this morning. Uh, <laughs> so Soren's mentor, Phil Burwell, uh, is unable to be here today, and so I have the great privilege of introducing Soren myself. Soren is a deep thinker and has a searching mind. I've had the honor of knowing him for many years, and I'm regularly impressed by his genuine thoughtfulness and understanding. He's also quick and clever, and has a delightful sly smile that I take pride in occasionally evoking. <laughs> He's creative as well, and has a strong sense of self, although is willing to take others' considerations into account when deciding what to do. I'm glad to know him, and I proudly introduce to you, Soren. I think that everyone is much too preoccupied with death. I think that death is like a stubborn person peering over your shoulder, refusing, no matter how much you tell them to, to leave you alone. No matter how many times you tell them that you're doing something, they'll never go away. Death is always present and watching what you're doing. Now you could always stay fearful that death will see you mess up, embarrass yourself, or you could wear your clumsiness and stupidity on your chest like a prized medal. The reason that I made that analogy was to make you understand that death will always be there, watching you, waiting for that fatal, lethal mistake. That mistake which could be so small, but death doesn't care. It's the end for you, no matter how big or small that mishap was. Thinking this, you could live your entire life by a half, hesitant, always frightened and timid, scared that you'll make that unfortunate blunder. Or you could take risks, have confidence, and be brave, and live as much as you can. I believe you should live your life full, as much as you can. The only thing you can do in life is to try and have the best time that you can, and despite whatever's going on. You should acknowledge that bad things happen, and when they do, you should just try to laugh it off. I think that life moves fast, so if you don't slow down every once in a while, you might miss it. That's what I believe. Hi friends, I'm Betty O'Brien, and this is Ruby Grousman. And this is my love letter to Ruby. Ruby, I think you know, I pretty much adore you. I love your high energy, the laughter and brightness you bring to our gatherings. I love the conversations we've shared that are full of depth and maturity. You amaze me with your accomplishments and talents, actor, artist, sailor, cosplayer, traveler, singer-songwriter, and of course, you're a loyal friend to others. I admire the resilient way you balance the tough times with times of fun and excitement. You are gifted and determined and kind and curious. You have it all, Ruby. Just keep going and know I'll be on the sidelines cheering you on. And here's Ruby. You're gonna make me cry, don't do that. 
Okay. My ukulele may have just come untuned. No, it's not. Wait. It's part of the process. Don't worry about it. Okay. Um. Okay. Hi. I'm Ruby, and this is how I feel about life and birth and after death and what is even real about all the different gods I know almost nothing about and what I'll do when I'm older, even though that's way too far away to think about. Because I only have five more trips around the sun, only five more years until my teen years are done. And for me, it's kind of scary thinking I might have to do my own laundry. <laughs> but anyway, here's what I think. I think that all lives are special and when we die we come back as something special to your to watch somebody's back and I think there's something in the water in the air something that's always inevitably there and I don't know what I'll do when I grow up and frankly, I won't fret because I still have a long way to go. A long way to go. A long way to go. Because I only have five more trips around the sun. Only five more years until my teen years are done. Only five more until I legally can be tried as an adult for murder in Washington. <laughs> Only 1,731 days until my teen childhood is done. So, adult childhood, here I come. Good morning, I'm Robin Steeman, and it's an honor to have had this time with Frances this year, getting to know her. And wait till you hear what I found out. Notably, Frances is multifaceted. She's athletic, she plays volleyball, basketball, skis, and she just took up track this year, discus and sprinting. Frances loves books, movies, and theater. She's seen Hamilton, the play three times, and she's seen the movie too many times to count. Frances is creative, she draws, she paints, and she makes mar large model rooms for her stuffed animals. <laughs> Does she love animals? Yes, she's an animal lover, cats in particular. But wait, she also collects shells, loves camping, and is a big fan of ice cream. Her enthusiasm for life is infectious, and it's my pleasure to introduce Frances Lynch. Good morning. I'm Frances Lynch, and I painted this painting to represent what I believe in. I painted the galaxy because when I think about what I believe in, I usually look up to the sky because I think about the great mystery of what's out there and what's beyond us. I think humans started with the Big Bang. The person in my painting is wearing rainbow socks to represent equality, which is really important to me. Not everyone is treated equally, and I like to stand up for what's right and try to make the world a better place. Animals in nature are a big part of what I believe in. I think of them as something I can look up to. I painted the cheetah on my picture because it's a strong animal and it inspires me to be a strong leader. What makes life worth living is the mystery of what's out there, my friends and family, learning new things about the world, and what can make the world a better place. Raul Sierra, you are an amazing young man. It's been great spending time with you, walks on the beach, 
helping you refurbish your old wooden sailboat, planting trees, pulling dandelions, sharing beliefs, and exploring the meaning of life together. By your passionate commitment and your actions to promote social justice, you have inspired me to be a better person. You have so much to offer the world. But don't forget to spend as much time sailing in your boat as you are trying to make the world a better place. It already is just by your being here as you are. I regret that I cannot be with you today in person, but I'll see you when I get back. It is indeed a pleasure for me to present you to this congregation that both loves and supports you. This is my credo. It's what I currently believe. It may change or it may not, so take it for what it's worth. I do not believe in most organized religions because they have often been used to oppress people with different beliefs. Also, I simply can't wrap my head around most religions. Most religions give people a simple way for them to know what they should do. I don't feel I need a religion to give me a sense of what is good and what is bad. I believe in my own conscience being able to tell me the difference between right and wrong and the area in between. I also have faith in things in the spiritual realm, such as love, friendship, community, and a connection between everything. I believe that we should not stand idle and that we should fight for what we believe in. If you do not fight for what you believe in, you do, you do, if you do not fight for what you believe in, you do not truly believe in it. If you're not sure what you believe in, when the time comes for you to take action, you will learn what you truly believe in. I believe that we need to build community through love, respect, and friendship. And we need community for us to fight for what we believe in. Community is the people who are willing to back each other up. We need to know each other better to build community so that we can help each other through the good and the bad. I believe in second chances. Everyone is going to make mistakes. I believe in forgiveness. The current system of justice is not working for most people. If a person steals a wheelbarrow, I don't think they should be charged with a felony. Justice should be proportional. I believe in solidarity. Example of solidarity right now is the work happening around the Cobb City Project in Atlanta. And all the different people with their different ideals coming together around the world to struggle against Cobb City and fighting for what they believe in, even if they might believe in a slightly different thing, but they still have something that they can come together on. I believe there will always be people with different beliefs for myself, and this makes the world a better place. However, I may struggle with some people's beliefs. What I have the most faith in, in the, is the natural world, the trees, the river, the ocean, the soil, the fish, the mammals, plants, and the fungi. I'd love to thank all those who have diversified and challenged what I believe now as well as what I have believed in the past. I'm Beth Pope, and when I first learned that Noah was going to be my mentee, I could not believe my good fortune. I felt drawn like a magnet to this amazing person. I didn't know why exactly, though, but I, I soon found out. Noah is creative and unconventional two qualities I value a lot, probably because I didn't allow myself the same thing when I was young. He thinks for himself and makes his own decisions, something that has been both wonderful and challenging. Sometimes I, I'm, I'm 
pretty certain I've learned more, more from Noah than Noah has learned from me. And part of that is um, Noah's private process. Very, very creative. He's also a disciplined and accomplished aerial gymnast in the area of circus arts. Come and watch one of his performances. Many, many training hours per week. He's a deep thinker. Noah is passionate about his beliefs, particularly when it comes to being an, being an accepting community. Noah is also a normal, fun-loving 13-year-old who's into music, particularly live concerts, his friends, and his family. What touches me most deeply about Noah, though, is that he is kind to his core. That's not something that you can fake. I look at you, Noah, and I see the future, and it makes me smile. I give you Noah Picard. Close my eyes and I can see the world that's waiting up for me that I call my own. Through the dark, through the door, through where no one's been before, but it feels like home. They can say, they can say it all sounds crazy. They can say, they can say I've lost my mind. I don't care, I don't care, so call me crazy. We can live in a world that we design. Cause every night I lie in bed, the brightest colors fill my head. A million dreams are keeping me awake. I think of what the world could be, a vision of the one I see. A million dreams is all it's gonna take A million dreams for the world we're gonna make There's a house we can build Every room inside is filled With things from far away The special things I compile each one there to make you smile on a rainy day. They can say, they can say it all sounds crazy. They can say, they can say we've lost our minds. I don't care, I don't care if they call us crazy. Run away to a world that we design. Music plays a large role in my life, lifting me up when I feel weak or alone. And so here are some specific songs that represent some core values of mine. Ibuprofen by Bears and Trees represents friendship, platonic love, and the impact it has on my life. This is a large part of who I am and what shapes my beliefs. Like Real People Do by Heuser. That's home, the feeling that all is right because you are surrounded by those people in that place. Feeling immediately uplifted by those people, in some cases literally. Feel It Still by Portugal the Man was the first song that I ever performed to. It reminds me of how much a difference just a year can make, how much change happens, and how much improvement. Personal improvement is one of the most important things a person can do. A competition only with yourself. Good morning. <clears throat> My name is Bob Francis, and I have the extreme pleasure of introducing my 
mentee for the last nine months. Um, Kestrel Campbell is one of the finest artists I've ever known. A tremendous pianist. He's been studying classical piano for a number of years. Um, and you've already had a chance to hear her play a little bit. You're going to hear a chance to hear a little bit more in just a minute. Um, I was approached by uh, Kestrel's mom, Zepp, who is a good friend. Uh, at, as I was recovering from extreme dancing down at the concerts on the dock, <laughs> and that's not the reason I got this cane, but I could just as well have. And last summer, she pinned, uh, Zepp pinned me down and said, you know, Kestrel, she really, really loves her classical music, but she kind of feels like she'd like to learn something about some other genres that uh, she might uh, um, incorporate into her playing. And um, so, uh, I would, Zepp said, I was wondering if you'd work with her uh, to to learn something about jazz music and something about improvised music. And um, you could hold all of these boundaries. Um, and to, I think she needs to be freed up a bit. Anyway, so for the last nine months, once a week for 45 minutes at Kestrel's lunch hour on Thursday from school, she would walk down to my studio and we would do something. We'd sit together at the piano. And uh, we never really had a uh, huge schedule, but we tried so many things to try and understand something about creation, creating music, creating music in the moment. And um, I don't know where we, where we ended up, um, other than the fact that I, I really, I, I just feel so good about Kestrel and his, uh, his future as a musician. Um, and I'm, I'm very, very proud to introduce him to you to play. It's a song by, it's called The Song of Simplicity. Yeah, I, I wonder, I've heard it. It's not real simple as far as I can tell. <laughs> by uh, Boss and Brock. So, are you, here? are you there, Kestrel? Yeah.
Hi, I'm Amanda Webby. And I also highly recommend becoming a mentor. It's been an amazing process getting to know Olivia. Olivia Rose is an animal whisperer and an extraordinary artist. Her love of animals even extends to mythical beasts. She is a dragon expert. With patience and an eye for detail, she shared her knowledge with me. She is a teacher at heart. She is also a considerate friend, a devoted daughter, and a deeply caring sister. When we crafted together, she quickly declared that whatever we were making would be a gift for one of her brothers. Olivia has a quiet side, contemplative and observant. And she has a delightfully silly side as well. Olivia's kind and generous spirit makes the world a more wonderful place. I am honored to introduce Olivia Rose. I believe the world was created by a, from the Big Bang, not God or any one person. I believe animals have rights and are intelligent. I don't know what happens after you die, and I know no one will ever know until it happens to them, and I'm okay with that. I, be, I don't believe in God or angels because it's kind of hard to believe in something I've never seen or heard. I believe in kindness, love, and happiness. I believe you should take care of Earth and not try to make Mars a new one. I believe black lives matter. I believe in music. I believe we can heal and help. I do not think the greater power is a person. Instead, things like love, death, kindness, and life. I believe in altars. Mine has photos, stones, feathers, statues, and plants on it. I believe in communities that cherish you for who you are. When I grow up, I want to become a person who cherishes people for who they are, is kind and is loving and is happy. I do not want to be really rich, nor do I want to be really poor. I want to live in a world where people are equal and happy. I want indigenous people to have their land back. I want to live alongside them in peace. I believe that could happen one day if we were willing to change some of our ways. I believe we are here for a reason, even if I do not know what that reason is yet. Good morning. I'm Rob Campbell, and many of you may know me better as Zepp's husband. Um, <laughs> also, that was just my son, Kestrel, playing piano, so I'm a little shook. Um, but I'm here to introduce Oliver. And Oliver is the kind of dude that I would have liked to hang out with when I was his age. Uh, he reminds me a lot of my best friends um, when I was in high school. And luckily for me, I was able to spend a lot of time with them over the past several months. Ollie and I participated in a parents night out event here where we tried to control the chaos that is a group of about 10 pretty small kids as they tore through the RE rooms and collapsed uh, eventually uh, to watch a movie. As this happened, the youngest of them, a tiny girl, silently approached Oliver and crawled right into his lap. The way that I see it, there are not many better judges of character than a three-year-old. And Oliver passed the test here with flying colors. He has a great sense of humor, a thoughtful set of ethics, a sense of curiosity that will surely serve him well in whatever he pursues. It is my pleasure to introduce to you Oliver Moore. Thank you. Hi. I believe in the power that people have, but also that we can't control everything. Time moves without our, without our control, but that doesn't stop us from being kind. We move with the flow of time, adapting and adjusting ourselves as the waves crash around us. I believe life began with a bang, and we evolved through trial and error. We just don't know everything, and I hope we never do, because what must a boring world it would be if we never had a reason to learn. I don't know what happens when we die, and I'm okay with that. Maybe our souls disperse into a hint of energy for the world to reuse. But while it's still mine, I want to live vicariously through it. I can tell it what I want to do, but I know that it might not have a lasting effect. I exist to learn, to make mistakes, and become a better person. I have a choice in my life, which path to take, which people to impact, and I'm going to choose. But even with these choices, I hope there's a way to get out of the box, off the beaten path, 
And if I make the right decisions and say the right things, those doors will open. Thank you. Wow, there's a lot of you out there this morning. Good morning, I'm Cynthia Becker. And don't wait to become coming of age mentors. They're here now. And as Ruby so eloquently put it in her wonderful song, she's got five more times around the sun that she's gonna be here. Oliver has three. Violet, who I'm introducing, has four. Get to know them. They are fantastic people, and you're missing out if you don't know them. I've always been aware of Violet Peterson. I don't know why. Violet's kind of quiet. I'm kind of not. <laughs> and, but I remember Violet being up here for, for Time for All Ages. And I remember Violet being Mary at the Christmas, I don't know, pageant, what do we call that? Christmas pageant. I was always aware of Violet. And then last year I signed up to be a mystery pal. I had no idea who I was going to get. And I got these wonderful, heartfelt letters telling me about this person. This person played the violin, and so did I. And this person loved art, and so did I. And this person also loved animals, and so did I. And Bo did a really good job putting these two mystery pals together and setting us up, because here we are, coming of age. So this fall, I was more than blessed to be asked to be Violet's mentor. Violet kind of embodies still waters run deep. Violet can be quiet. Violet can kind of be off by herself. Violet has many of the talents that have been talked about today. She draws, she paints, she makes jewelry, and as you'll hear in a few moments, she writes songs. But what impresses me most about Violet is just her depth, not just of, just of thinking, but her depth of character. She is the person you want to be your friend because she's going to be there no matter what, and she will appreciate you. She's also an amazing daughter and an amazing sister. But what really gets me is how deeply she thinks about everything. She knows herself. She knows what she's good at. She knows what challenges her. And she knows how to meet those challenges. I don't know a lot of people like that. And so, with pride and love, I bring to you Violet Peterson. I cherish friends and strong connections. I cherish people who care about me and my cat. I cherish family and everyone who helped me grow. People who care about me. I feel safe with people I don't know. I don't. I don't really know. No one really knows how we know how life began. I don't really know. No one really knows how we know how life ends. Even if we knew how we know we knew, even if we knew how could other people tell, even if we were true, how would people know we are, even if we saw the truth. One such issue I care about is homeless. I want everyone to feel safe, not just me. I want to become a good person. I want to be empathetic to those who care about me. I don't really know, no one really knows how we know how life began. I don't really know, no one really knows how we know how life ends. Even if we knew how we know we knew, even if we knew how could people tell, even if we were true, how would people know we are? Even if we saw the truth. My talents are music, art, and learn things quickly. 
My parents and friends over the years had the greatest impact on me. They taught me how to communicate, they influenced, and led me to what I am now. When I step out on beautiful sunset, I feel an amazement. The beauty outside, friends and happy moments make it worth living life. I don't really know, no one really knows how we know how life began. I don't really know, no one really knows how we know how life ends. Even if we knew how we know we knew. Even if we knew, how could other people tell? Even if we were true, how would people know we are? Even if we saw the truth. Bad is torture, bad is suffering, good is helping, good is opposite, bad. Everything else is in the middle. Everything else is neither hurt and helping or bad. I don't really know, no one really knows how we know how life began. I don't really know, no one really knows how we know how life ends. Even if we knew how we know we knew, even if we knew how could other people tell, even if we were true, how would people know who we are? Even if we saw the truth, even if we knew how we know we knew, even if we knew how could people tell, even if we were true, how would people know who we are? Even if we saw the truth. Thank you all so much. Truly, truly incredible. And thank you all for being here. As we recognize these youth and mentors, I'm going to guide us through a congregational blessing. So mentors, will you please stand and face the congregation? Mentors, you have answered the call to be guides, friends, and teachers to the youth of our congregation. You have led by example. You have taught by sharing your own beliefs as Unitarian Universalists. You have learned from your mentees, and you have modeled friendship as a journey of generosity, commitment, and curiosity. Congregation, please join in the unison words. Mentors. We are grateful for your willingness to give your time, energy, and love as stewards and elders to the youth of our community. You have planted seeds of self-identity, personal integrity, and clarity that will continue to sprout and grow as these youth step out into the world knowing what it feels like to be seen and supported by their religious community. Thank you. You may be seated. <laughs> Youth, we honor your commitment to show up, to be of service, to explore friendship with your mentors, and to express your beliefs so eloquently and beautifully to our community. We are pleased and honored to have you as valued members of our congregation. Now, youth, please rise and face the congregation. And congregation, please join us in the unison words. We welcome you with pride and admiration for all that you have accomplished while coming of age. Each of you reminds us that our future as a congregation relies on our willingness to ability to listen and learn from each other. May you continue to thrive in our midst and always feel at home in this community of helping hands, open minds, and loving hearts. 
Please recognize our youth and mentors and their journey. May the love of truth guide you, the warmth of love hold you, and the spirit of peace bless you, this day and in the days to come. For our special music today, Soren Randall will play the beautiful Ashokan Farewell. We extinguish our flame. Oh, oh. Please join us in our chalice extinguishing words. <laughs> we extinguish our flame, but not the light of truth, the warmth of community, or the fire of commitment, or the power of transformation. These we carry in our hearts until we are together again. Next week, Kate Kinney will be speaking on the topic of religion and humor. You've got to be kidding. <laughs> I hope you can join us. Please bring a joke to share. Our postlude today is hymn 1017, Building a New Way. Please rise and body your spirit.
Thank you.